What's up, everyone? This is Magus the Brew, and we're going to do a Throne of Eldraine set review. I think today I'm going to start with the trailer. I never watched these, to be honest. Ginger Couple. Ah, we got Garrick in the video. Glad to see he's back. He's either on his way to strangle women, or he was just doing it and that's why the knights were after him. It's one or the other, with Gary. No, oh, I'm gonna pull a Toman. Overconsumption of dairy may kill you. Gary's still back there getting it. No, oh, she died. Don't sure bro is arranged anyways. Is she a planeswalker? Garrick, killed by a ginger girl. Yay, feminism. Okay, let's do the set review. Acclaimed contender, Knight Privilege. Also, I actually do like this card on account of the, in the usual cycle of creatures that when you, they enter the battlefield and they reveal top cards and you can put them into your hand from your their tribe. This one actually has different options as opposed to like just being elves or soldiers in the case of enlistment officer. Because uh, this one reveals knights, ores, equipments, and legendary artifacts. So that's actually fairly cool. Alela, Artful Provocateur. Uh, fairy Warlock, which is of note. Uh, flying Death Touch and Lifelink are not anything to scoff at. Uh, other creatures you control with flying get plus one plus zero. This is actually kind of exciting because it's not a specific tribe. It's flying tribal and flying. It's kind of universal and that randomly makes Ornithopter more playable. And then her second ability, whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment, create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token with flying. So that will become a 2-1 provided she's out. So, yeah, nice. Arcane Signet. Yeah. No words on that one. Aria, first of the Lockthorn. Aria falls into kind of standard aristocrats type decks, and you can use that by extension into as a commander. Um, and she even has, you can sacrifice another cre uh, black creature and draw a card. So she does create card advantage, and then she gets death triggers. So if you have death triggers in there, because she's only when uh, creatures enter the battlefield, but some creatures can come from the graveyard, you know. Aristocrat stacks, that's how they work. Bake into pie. I don't know what to say. Destroy target cre creature, create a food. That makes sense to me. Black Lance Paragon, the knight kill spell. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get, he gets a knight, but presumably him will get um, death touch and lifelink. And he does have flash, so you can cast him whenever you want. He's costed as though he's a doom blade. The only thing that he does not kill are first strike creatures and double strike creatures by extension. Um, but I don't know, very efficient, cool kill spell to be completely honest. Bog Naughty, as opposed to Bog Nice. Bone Crusher Giant. I like this card in the, actually I like all the adventure cards, to be honest, in the way that you can cast the adventure half and then the creature later. This card would be very different if it was five CMC, like three and two red and it shocked when it came into play and it was also Bone Crusher Giant. So I find that kind of fascinating. And I think that this card is actually quite good because Shock, um, at least in some formats, is actually entirely playable and it's versatile. And you cast a giant whenever you want. And then he does have a kind of built in, I don't want to say protection, but mitigation factor. Bramble Fort Fink, Oof Tribal. We're slowly getting there. Brazen Borrower. Uh, this card is another adventure card. Um, but it has a bounce spell on it in the adventure half and then it's also a flash flying um, creature so and it's costed very this, it, exactly the same as uh, Vendillion Click with the same power and toughness with flying and flash but instead of hitting um, where you can cast in your draw step for uh, advantage this one has a bounce spell so I actually think it's quite cool Round Cloaked Giant uh, you get a board wipe for five, which is good. I mean, I don't know how many people are playing giant tribal. They are not the most uh, supported creature type. Uh, they're getting there, though. We have seen more giants. And giants are definitely coming, but not not quite there yet. And then you get a 7-7 uh, seven, seven vigilance for seven. So, yeah, not bad. 
Cauldron Familiar. Uh, cats are awesome. However, <clears throat> this one though, I thought black cats were supposed to be unlucky. This one, when it enters the about, battlefield, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Sounds like a lucky cat to me. And then the second half is my favorite part of this card. Sacrifice of food, return Cauldron Familiar from the graveyard to your battlefield. Now, if anybody has any experience ever feeding stray cats, you know how this works. They will always come back. And if you ever hear anybody say that like, oh yeah, I feed this cat from, I don't know, it's a stray cat from down the street or something like that. That is not a stray cat. That is your cat. You just don't know it yet. Chu Lane, Teller of Tales. Another of the uh, Brawl command Commanders, the uh, Bant one. Uh, this dude basically has like a glimpse of nature strapped to an explore on him uh, with then some built-in um, resilience with uh, bouncing himself or another creature to keep the engine going. Uh, he's very powerful. A lot has been said about Tulane already. Uh, I would like to talk about his bugged out eyes though. This dude is spinning on something. And I can only assume it's in that little vial on his waistband. Which looks like ocean vodka. So I mean, he's a vodka drinker. Clack Ridge Troll. Uh, a <laughs> five cost travel haste 8-8. Eight, eight. That makes goat tokens for all those goat tribal people. You know, I think you'd be on the opposite side of this tribe. Goats versus trolls. Apparently that's a war that's been raging on for a long time. This card is just... A lot of flavor, really cool. Claim the Firstborn. Okay, so that for one, this art is really creepy, a little bit off-putting, but gain control of target creature with converted mana cost three or less until end of turn. I did not know that converted ma mana cost translated to age, which that makes a lot of things really weird. That means Amina 2 is older than Gadok Teague, and I'm sure there's even weirder examples, but. Learn something new every day. Command Tower. A reprint in a format that cannot use it, but we all needed it, so... No complaints there. Crashing Drawbridge. Now, this card is of note because it is a colorless artifact that can be... that enables haste. And in certain colors that are not as good at getting global haste effects, this is quite good. Dance of the Mans. This card's interesting. I don't really... Is it Sleeping Beauty or something? I really don't know. It's an interesting card, though. I mean, the uh, returning uh, enchantments from your graveyard is always beneficial. And then if you do it six or more, then they all become 4-4 four, four creatures. Kind of like an Opal Lessons type effect. Or a March of the Machines if they were artifacts or something. So, Deafening Silence. This card is very good. Uh, one white and each player can't cast more than one non-creature spell uh, each turn. That is very powerful. That stops a lot of decks. Uh, very cost-effective. Good white card. Very good hate piece. What, Pooh Bear? Apparently my cat wants to be in the podcast. Luna, now I have to start over. No. Luna, you're making this very difficult. Say hi to the camera, Luna. Okay. Love you. Love you, Blue Bear. Doom Foretold. Now, this card I find kind of completely confusing. If everybody sacrifices a non-land, non-token permanent card, then it goes back to you, and then you neglect to pay, do you then subsequently... Discard a card, draw a card, gain two life and lose two life, or, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then create a 2-2 two -two token with Vigilance? I guess so. That's weird, though. Drown in the Lock. This card is very effective. Counter target spell with converted mana cost equal to less than the number of cards in controller's graveyard. And then destroy target creature with converted mana cost equal to less than the number of target controller's graveyard. This card is very versatile. Uh, very good card. Slots into basically any single blue-black commander deck that could... Yeah, there's no reason not to run it. Uh, I do have some questions about the art. When I first saw it, I thought this woman 
was holding in her right hand a fish. And at first I was like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Like you wouldn't be able to like pull your, you can't get leverage off a fish. You can't pull yourself out of the water with a fish. But now I know that there's actually like a mer person uh, dragging them down. And their hand is actually out of the water, the left hand. So they were so close to getting out. Embercleave. Very good red artifact. Uh, it has flash, which is kind of unusual. It costs less for each attacking creature, which is relatively easy to do in red, attack with, attacking with multiple creatures. And then when it enters the battlefield, it attaches to a creature, which is nice. And then the equipped creature is plus one, plus one, trample, and double strike. And that is all very good. Very nice card. Embereth, Shield Breaker. Now this card, I'm talking about the uh, Collector's Edition art, the alternate art. The art on this card is amazing. Uh, one of my favorite um, arts I've ever seen. Emery, Lurker of the Lock. Lady in the Water that's very good at artif infinite artifact combos. A lot has been said about her. She's good. Fabled Passage, a card I've always wanted. Uh, I think that... I know Modern Horizons had um, Prismatic Vista, and I was very happy with that card. This one has no life requirement, but there is a... Um, you have to meet certain requirements for to come into play untapped, but very cool card. Always wanted these. I've always wanted a better Terramorphic Expanse. We've had Terramorphic Expanse forever, so these are always nice. Fabro Elder. This card is basically a revamped version of Bloom Tender. It's basically just Bloom Tender plus one more color. This one actually does get buffer, uh, provided the uh, you meet color requirements among permanents. Um, very good for infinite mana combos. Fay of Wishes. Now, I know we don't have wish boards in Commander, but if we did, this card would be fantastic. And it's still a cool card, nonetheless. For a three and a blue, you get to choose a non-creature card for you and from outside the game and put it into your hand. Uh, this is actually relatively fairly costed, considering that... So, creature card, non-creature card, so barring Living Wish. Living Wish, you can at least grab lands. But this is only one more mana than most of the other ones. I know Burning Wish, Incident and Sorcery is only two, but Cunning Wish is three, and Death Wish, you it's only three, but you lose half your life rounded up or something. So very good. And then you can actually pay to uh, discard two cards and return Fey Wishes to, uh, to your hand. So you can actually cast the Adventure half again, which is quite cool. Feasting Troll King. This card is big for only six mana. A lot of green pips, though, but... I do have a question, or I kind of have a flavor fail on this card. I think that, so he's a fe he likes to eat, right? Now, if he dies, you can sacrifice food and bring him back. So, which, I guess, either he likes food so much he can not die, or it should have been that he should just be tapped, and you can untap him if you give him food. Does have vigilance though, so I kind of fucks it up. Fires of Invention. I'm a big fan of cards like this. These like high risk uh, red cards. They give you a huge drawback, but you get something really powerful. Cards like this, I think, are quite interesting. Frogify. This type of effect to cast onto somebody's commander is hilarious. It's basically the closest thing we have to tucking now. Gadwick the Wizard. Brain Geyser on a creature. Garrick, Cursed Huntsman. I actually okay. So I'm looking at the extended art right now. I actually like that he creates two wolf tokens, and then in the artwork, they actually have two wolves in the background. That's very solid. I think this card is not particularly great. The emblem is good, and you're very close to it. I mean, you basically get an um, overrun uh, emblem. But destroying creature and drawing card, the minus three is probably what you're going to be doing most of the time. I don't know. Could have been better. Gilded Goose. The goose that laid the golden egg and it isn't better than Birds of Paradise. Gingerbread. Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm a gingerbread man. Fantastic. Yeah. Food Golem. Grumgully the Generous. Now this card is basically, at least in the Malira combos, if you want to run Malira as your camp commander, um, Grumgully just kind of replaced her because you get additional red, so you get more persist creatures. Get um, Gamble as a tutor, not the best tutor, but a tutor, and which is notable because finding the artifacts in those decks is actually quite difficult because Mono Green has no way really to find artifacts, and those are necessary for your um, combos with your persist creatures. And then uh, you get Goblin Bombardment, which actually is a win con as opposed to just 
generating infinite mana or something like that. However, do you have some questions about this card? So we look at the flavor text first. Doesn't matter what it is, take it and be grateful. Now you look in his hand, he has a shit ton of shrooms in his hand. And then you look at his hat, and he has a hat made out of shrooms as well. This guy is like the guy that you go over to his house to chill, and he always offers you shrooms. And it's never just a little bit. It's always a lot. Like, it's a heroic dose worth of shrooms. He's a nice guy, but these people you got to watch out for sometimes. Sometimes you just want to chill, not have a transcendental experience. Happily ever after. Now, this card isn't banned, and I don't understand why Coalition Victory is. Just kidding. I'm kind of more questioning the motives of the artwork here. What is this card really trying to tell us? When I look at it and how the card works, I'm thinking that interracial marriages can be difficult to set up. But once you get there, it's amazing. You win the game. Hard to start at first, but good in the end. Hushbringer, hey bear with a lot of lips. Into the story. When Wizards of the Coast takes inspiration from a Wendy's value meal. Ironcrag Pyromancer. Young Pyromancer is now trans and thick. Keeper of Fables. Cat Cannabis. Kendra's Transformation. I like this card on account that it is cantrips, which is kind of a very rare ability in green for something like this, because this is another card that just obliterates a commander. So, good card. Kenrith. The Return King, Old Kenny Boy. Now this card basically does everything. You can, all creatures gain trample and haste. You can put plus one, plus one counters on things. You can draw cards, gain life. You can reanimate things. He's literally the Amazon.com of commanders. And he's very powerful for that reason. Horvold, Fey Cursed King. Another really powerful commander from the uh, Brawl sets. However, a lot has been said about him, but I have some questions about the artwork in this one. For one, Kenrith gets turned into an elk, but Corval gets turned into a dragon. Seems kind of unfair. Those are very... One is clearly better than the other one. And then, in the artwork here, there is a man sacrificing three people. One looks like another man. Maybe. Long-haired, though. And then it looks like two kids. So this man is sacrificing two kids to this dragon. That is very dark. Midnight Clock, personal time twister. Mirror Maid, uh, basically just a additional copy artifact or a straight up replacement for copy enchantment. As you, and Estrid's Invocation is another one, uh, but quite interesting. Murderous Rider, now this card is a, the adventure half is basically a hero's downfall and then you get a zombie creature with life link, so do you even get the, gain the previous life back? that you lost for the adventure half. But in the collector's edition art, it looks like a cave painting. Very creepy cave painting. So that's interesting. Mystical Dispute. I wonder what he forgot to do. Did he forgot to take out the trash? Forgot to do the dishes? He's in trouble for something and now he's hearing about it. Mystical Sanctuary. This card is extremely powerful. Uh, it did not need the island subtype and that's what puts it over the top. Just the fact of returning an island or sorcery from your graveyard to the top of your library is insane. And if you look at the relative power levels of all the other of these basic land cards in this set, this one is leagues above the rest. Oath Sworn Knight, Monty Python reference. Oko, the trickster, not Broko. Oko, Thief of Crowns. Now, this card is already being considered one of the greatest Planeswalkers ever printed. Uh, he's been banned in multiple formats already. However, in the extended art, I have some questions because, for one, I thought he was a fairy. Maybe he's not. Maybe I'm wrong. But there's a bunch of little fairies. And they're really tiny. They're like thumb big. Something's like, like this big. So that's, I didn't know they were that small. And then if you look at his left hand on his pinky, he has, that's the only one. And he has a very long claw on it, which if anybody knows, that's a Coke claw. So Oko does Coke. Once upon a time. Flavor wise, this card is amazing. Uh, if it's free, if it's the first bow you've cast each game, then you get to go deeper into your library. One of the best flavor cards in the set. Opportunistic Dragon. Wasted Opportunity. Opt. We need alternatives, Hannah, yelled Gerard. Now. Good reprint story is nice. Overwhelmed Apprentice. Grad School Personified. Piper of the Swarm. Rat Trouble cards are always cool. 
a lot of the rat commanders, especially with rat colony and dominaria, those have had a real boost. Flavor text. If it has ears, it will dance to my tune. So why'd you pick rats, bro? Like you could have picked anything that has ears. Kind of a weird choice. You look at the artwork. Yeah, creepy dude. Questing beast from Arthurian legend. Uh, the Arthurian legend, I think it has a giraffe body and a chicken head or a snake head or I don't know, something like that. This one just kind of looks like a panther with an ugly nose with a spiky tail on the end. But nice card. Wrinkle, Master of Pranks. Or Wrinkle, Master of Prankles. This card is interesting in that it's a new mono black stacks commander. Uh, Braids is banned and this card is nowhere near as offensive as braids but it does if you build around it making each player sacrifice this creature does have flying in haste which means it won't usually smack the first time it goes out uh, it does get some card advantages but it's symmetrical next card return of the wild speaker hulkamania return to nature the better naturalize robber of the rich robin hood uh, and i like the fact that the stealing from the rich part is embodied in the a number of cards in a player's hand. I had no idea that cards in hand equates with wealth. Which is kind of interesting. Everybody starts off the same unless you have to mulligan. I guess that's been getting dealt a shit hand in life. Rowan, fearless spark mage. Little Red Riding Hood is not good. Run away together. Now this card you can choose two different creatures controlled by different players. Return those creatures to their owner's hands. If I choose one of my own creatures and somebody else's Mine is consenting, theirs is not, that is kidnapping, and that is not the same thing. That is a crime. Seven Dwarves. Now this card, any deck may have up to seven cards named Seven Dwarves, so you get one for each dwarf. And they get plus one, plus one for each other creature named Seven Dwarves. And if you look at the art, there is seven dwarves in the artwork. So, Flavor Win, Shepherd of the Flock. Is this Jesus? And I thought Throne of Aldrain was only supposed to be about fables. But that is not appropriate. I'm going to reel back from that one. Shimmer Dragon. Uh, six for a 5-6 flying beat stick. It has hexproof if you control four more artifacts. So you can just create your deck in such a way that you usually do. And you can tap two of those artifacts and draw a card. Very good. Very efficient. Sorcerer's Spyglass. Nice reprint. Full art reprint this time. Uh, I know it's a relatively new card. It came out in Exelon, but it's a worthy, worthy, worthy reprint. Steelbane Hydra. Turtle Hydra. Sir Gwen, Hero of Ashvale. Mardu Commander. Probably costed a little bit too much, though, um, for a six um, converted mana. It costs five, five Vigilance Menace. Uh, creature just have equipments you control have equipped knight zero which most likely means that you're just going to make a voltron deck which then makes her pr prior ability mostly relevant whenever an equipped creature you control attacks you draw a card and you lose one life now you're most likely probably going to be drawing one card and losing one life you will not get the full suite of it attacking with multiple knights because they're required to be equipped Presumably what you would build. Sir Conrad the Grim, a great uncommon. His first ability is actually, it has three tiers. It's whenever a creature dies. Whenever a creature is put in the graveyard from anywhere, so it includes milling. Whenever a creature card leaves the battlefield, that's a separate trigger. Deals one damage to each opponent, not just one, not the person that got milled. And then he can also pay one in a green, and each player puts a top card of their library in their graveyard. So he actually is a infinite mana sink on top of that. Although setting up infinite mana and mono black is a little bit difficult. Um, you have uh, Magus of the Coffers and then the untap equipments can do it. The Cauldron of Eternity. This card is not great. Um, it should only ever cost two black. It is not terrible though. Good kind of reanimation type effect. I did think though when I first saw this art though that this fairy right here in the middle was getting hung on the cauldron. And I was like, ooh rough but they're actually just standing there not being hung nice to know the circle of loyalty king arthur's round table however king arthur's round table sucks 
it costs one less for each knight you control. I know this is a knight set and we need knight stuff, so I get it. Anthem. Whenever you cast a legend to create a 2 2 knight creature token, it just. Yeah. If it costs one less for just creatures you controlled, like Embercleave is just attacking creatures, white really needs good cards, so did it have to be knights? Imagine if Cauldron of Eternity cost two less for each zombie in your graveyard. And zombies are most likely the ones you would have most in your graveyard. The Great Henge. Stonehenge. Another uh, Malira replacement. And this card is basically free if you meet the creature uh, greatest power requirements. And then you, pay it for, you play it for two half for two, gain two life. Basically just gain two life for nothing. Very powerful card. The Magic Mirror. This card I really like. It's six and triple blue, which is cost prohibitive, but costs one less for each instant and sorcery in your graveyard. That is not terribly difficult to do. It should only cost triple blue. Uh, you have no maximum hand size, which means you're very wealthy, as we have previously found out. And you can put a counter on it uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, and then you get to draw a card for each one of those. And it's, Scales. I think this card is kind of underrated. I think people tend not to remove Ristic Studies. This card will not give you as many cards on the front end, but I think you could definitely draw some cards off this. The Royal Scions. I don't know, it looks like three mana to draw a card and discard a card. Just some standard looting. The ultimate's not even that amazing. Yeah, not a fan. Not gonna play these in Oathbreaker either. Thrill of Possibility. The instant version of Wild Guest and Tormenting Voice. Thunderous Snapper. Another Turtle Hydra. I have a little bit of questions about on the artwork. Now, snapping turtles are primarily underwater. That seems to be their habitat. This one seems to be above water in a, like a foot, just a, it's a, like in water that's only about a foot, a foot deep. And that's kind of confusing from what I know about snapping turtles. So either this turtle is way out of its element or this man is very good at remaining calm underwater. Two, Tome Raider. Got me confused. Yeah, not to be confused with Tomb Raider. Is, is that what it's referencing? That's confusing. And also there's a cat in the background of the art, so that's... Yeah, yay cats. Torbran, Thane of Redfell. Now this type of symmetrical effect is what red in Commanders really needs. Uh, this is fantastic. Um, it deals 2 plus the damage, so... This kind of is one of those cards like Zada, Hedron Grinder, that, is it Grinder? Chet. Zada. It made a lot of really like useless red commons viable in Commander. Like this is the, the deck that really like pushed those together. And I think that Torbran kind of has those too. Like I'm sure there's some really cool red cards out there, like one red deal, one damage to each opponent maybe. It's like a sorcery or something. And I think it makes certain cards a lot more playable. Vantress Gargoyle. Ghoul Collar's Bell on a creature. Uh, it's kind of nice. It mills, which means it supports itself because it can't attack unless an opponent has seven or more creatures or cards in their graveyard. Yeah, I like this card. Weapon Rack. Now this card, I understand the flavor that creatures are getting a plus one, plus one counter each turn. You know, they're grabbing a weapon. But it couldn't be cooler if it just gave out weapon tokens. Wish Claw Talisman. Old monkey's paw. And a budget replacement, a very budget replacement for uh, Grim Tutor. Another three costed um, tutor spell. I mean, this is probably even a replacement for Demonic Tutor, maybe. Because you can always choose the opponent you give it to, so you can give it to somebody that's tapped out. Witch's Oven. If only this card was a free sacrifice outlet, that would be literally incredible. But it's not, it has to tap. It's not an infinite usable one. I know I like the flavor of it. You sacrifice creature, you create food. They're getting baked. I get it, but it would have been cooler. I mean, couldn't we just got this card in a supplemental set? I know if it didn't have to tap, it'd go infinite with Cauldron Familiar. Yeah, I know that's probably way too much, especially with the Aristocrats types. Uh, decks you could pull with Aria or Yara. But that said, we could have just got Witch's Oven that cost three, fuck, maybe even four and just put it in a different set, like a commander supplemental set or something. Just do that, that would've been, that would've been really cool. Witch's Vengeance. When does a board sweeper become a genocide? I guess in this case, since it's only minus three, minus three, it's probably just a hate crime. Worthy Knight. Apparently not that worthy. Whenever you cast a knight spell, create a one, one white human creature token. Why can't it just make more knights? Is it worthy because it has 
fandom because it has supporters. It has more subscribers. Does it make it a worthy knight? I thought knights were more of a insular tribe that they sported each other, you know. Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig. It's big green boy. However, I have some grooming questions about this guy. He has a green beard and green arm hair. However, they are not just specifically green. They look literally like grass. So, do people mow his arms? Like, do, do they get mowed? Or does he shave? And what does he shave with? Oh, pressing, pressing question. That is the uh, end of the review. So, thank you for watching and making it this far. And I'll see you all soon.